Hello, welcome. Today we're going to be going through yet another scrawler box. This is a UK based art subscription service. Today we're going to be digging inside and uh, making something with the contents. I've been really digging the packaging lately. It just feels like a lot of attention and care went into it and I appreciate that. Anyway, let's see what's in here. Da, 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 da. It's very square. Uh, just open up the paper towel. Paper towel. Paper tissue. Whoa, I'm seeing a lot of colors. <gasps> oh, I thought it was a warhead and I was like. <laughs> it's not. It is a Uncle Joe's mint ball. I'm guessing a UK candy because I've never seen it. But I like his top hat. We have the scroll box sticker. I think this is the October box. It's really pretty and I love the warm fall tones. Here we have the menu listing the art supplies that are inside this box. And then we have the art supplies. I, I love just seeing a little rainbow. I can't go wrong with a rainbow. What is this? Feels rubbery. Odd. Oh, it's the Kiritake Food Twin Tip Marker. So it's got two ends. That looks like a brush nip. And that's like maybe a more flexible brush nib. Let me read this. Oh, one side's just gray and one side is black. You can't really tell when you look at the nib because those are both very dark colors. But when we swatch it, you'll definitely see. We also have a pencil. This is the Kui Noor Hardmuth 1860 in the, in the tone B. We have a pen. This is the, oh, I've never heard of this. The Centra Pen Liner 2811F. Interesting. Apparently supposed to be good for accuracy because it has a soft nib. You know, looks like that. <laughs> and now for the rainbow. This is ba -ba -ba -ba, the manuscript Califlex Creative. Califlexy Creative. Flexible italic brush tips. What is that word? Imponts? Oh, it's a different language. <laughs> dies in uncultured. <laughs> so it has a ventilated cap, washable ink, and 12 colors. So it has a chisel nib that's also flexible. So it's almost like a brush chisel. That's very interesting to me. So it looks like it's used by a lot of maybe calligraphists. Is that a word? A calligraphist. <laughs> a calligraphy artist? Maybe that's more correct. Lettering artist. Okay, I guess that's what they're called. Or the Cali Creative Flexi Markers. So you're supposed to read it that way. Do, do, do. Oh, I just ripped it. Well, look at the colors. Ooh, what the heck? It's a pad of paper. Hmm. <laughs> I love when it has their branding on it. I don't know what it is. I just really like it when it's all cohesive. Oh, and then you have the Z. I'm getting really distracted here. Look at the markers. They're kind of short. They look very cute. I like them. So you have black, gray, brown, purple, blue, teal. Actually. Is this more like a, I don't know, this one could be teal. Anyway, green, magenta, yellow, orange, red. And if we take a look, we can see that flexible chisel nib. How interesting. I don't think, oh, whoa, it's super pointy. So like a chisel nib that I'm used to. So if you look at it, it's got that familiar chisel shape. And then on the top, it's like the same. How do I show you this? <laughs> It's the same width throughout, whereas these manuscript pens, oh, black probably wasn't the right color. You can't really see. It's actually thinner at the tip of the chisel than at the base of the nib. Hopefully you can tell. <laughs> oh, we have the print. Oh, that is cool. Look at all the fun textures and lines. It's really cool. I love all the intric in intri in intricacy. Got it. So it's the artist known as Calligra Paint. Very cool. And you can see their social media right there. Where do you get the inspiration for these different lines? And yet they look so good. I really like looking through these zines. Oh, there's the artist. It's like a mixture of Arabic, Cyrillic, Latin, and kanji calligraphy. Oh yeah, now that now that I know that, I can kind of see some familiar shapes. Some, ooh, tips on calligraphy. It doesn't have to be legible to be beautiful. Well, then maybe we can achieve beauty today. <laughs> to warm up, try filling a page quickly with large and overlapping letters. Don't think about it. Pick a word and write it over and over and over again as or many ways as possible until the word isn't a word anymore and just a collection of lines. This is cool. This is like not like anything I've ever done before. I just love the colors of that. Okay. 
So I'm going to start with that one thing they mentioned with warming up, which was just writing the same word over and over again. And I want to use this little pad of paper. Does it say what this is? 140 GSM cartridge paper. And uh, we'll uh, just write the same word over and over again. I might go in rainbow order. What should we write? Well, I've never used these yet. We haven't even swatched them. Um, <laughs> what do I write? That's not too cheesy. Try it. Ooh. Okay, that's not how you do this, right? Upstroke should be skinny, downstroke should be big. There's like little tips on how to do calligraphy and things to try. Ooh, how do you do an S? Ah, <laughs> okay, not my strong suit, but this pen does make it look cool anyway. I need to try these things too. What do these do? Kind of like outline it. I have like my way of handwriting that, you know, I've been doing for, ye oh shoot, they're wet. Oh <laughs> shoot! <laughs> but I have my way of handwriting that I've been doing, you know, for years. And then trying to like think of letters in a completely different way is boggling the mind. Look, I have lowercase and uppercase. Ooh, bad. <laughs> I feel like that's a no-no. Wonder. There's no white gel pen or anything, but I wonder if you can use like this gray for shading. Ooh, that's dark. Such a good fruit. I don't know why I chose that word. Gotta swatch them all. Swatch them all. What about cursive? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm so good at it. <laughs> I forget that they're like still wet after you put them down. You gotta wait for them to dry. Kind of remind me a little bit of like magic markers by Crayola. In the way they apply, I don't know if that's an insult. I like the way the rainbow's getting more condensed. That'd be funny if I'm writing this, like spelling this word wrong and I just wrote it this many times. That would be hilarious. Ooh, this black is nice and bold. You know what this looks like? It looks like when you go to the store and there's like the Sharpie section and they have a little piece of paper so you can write whatever you want. That's what this looks like. Now what? I feel like whenever there's like an art supply that I've, I'm not familiar with, I get so much more nervous and I don't know, that's probably a good thing. I don't know. I think what's really frightening isn't specifically the art supply, but the like the very skinny paper. So I don't know if maybe I should just jump into my sketchbook so that I don't have to be intimidated by that. <laughs> I really like these designs. Ooh, they blend together. Huh. It's like I do that and then I grab like maybe the yellow one and I blend that out again. Interesting. Because they dry so slowly, you can blend them out. Ponders the possibilities. I do think I will jump into the sketchbook though. I wonder if I should try to like incorporate something I'm more familiar with. Reach for the sketchbook. You know, like characters and stuff like that. Oh no, what's this? That better come off my desk. Okay, good. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, it's probably for my hands. Yikes. Anyway, I feel like what might be smart is to like start with something that I'm familiar with. Maybe perhaps a human person and see if I can somehow use like calligraphy in a way like sort of like this owl, but not exactly, you know. Try to find something that feels comfortable to me. Because what I like to do is try and find a way to incorporate new art mediums or art styles, I guess, into my own without being like untrue to myself, you know? Like I wanna give the art supplies a fair shake, but sometimes when it's your first time using something, like it's kind of hard to give it that <laughs> fair chance because it is, there's so many different factors. And like, if you try to draw in a completely different style at the same time, you're not really giving it the fair shake because you're not experienced in drawing those objects either. So if you mix that with a new art supply, it can be very, very overwhelming. Gotta do a smile. Yes, please. More happiness in the world, thank you. What if you do like some flowy hair? Try to find the arms in here. They're a bit long maybe. Now, my thought here is to try and just fill sections with patterns or something, you know, along those lines. This arm kind of competes with that hair. I might change <laughs> something, <laughs> but what? I don't know. So like if I look at the owl, 
there's specific lines that are important for the owl, but then, you know, they're filled in with something else. Could I do something like that? And then what colors do I use? Hmm? <laughs> so many factors. What I might try first. How did the, like if you put down a line, can you go over that with one of these markers? Or does it bleed? Or do you have to do that afterwards? Look, it does bleed out. So line here, we'd go last. So it goes over pencil fine, but then obviously you're not gonna be able to erase it once you go over it. Oh wait, you can? What? What is this magic? Never experienced that. Huh. So maybe we should try that. Well, <laughs> the pondering is real. Um. Also, the, the way these markers feel, it feels like the ones that are gonna start ripping up your paper if you layer them too much. So I don't wanna go too crazy here. What happens if you like mix this with like an alcohol marker? I'm curious. Ooh. Blend out that line. Oops, I went right through the paper. Just thinking, I'm just thinking out loud. What's wrong? <laughs> I should just experiment. I shouldn't let the fear of failure stop me from trying. Give her some clothes and then go from there. <laughs> now I'm gonna do something real silly here. I don't know, feel silly. And I'm gonna use the word of the object I'm coloring to fill it in. Does that make sense? So, I don't know, we'll start with, what color do we want? Um, I don't know, we can mix it up. <laughs> we'll start with yellow, because that seems like the easiest to layer on top of if I so choose. And we'll like fill in, so like here, I'll write the word hair. You get the idea? So like here, I can do it again. Hair. <laughs> and fill it in here too. Yellow's not the best option I'm thinking cause I can't see it. And don't let two written the same orientation next to each other. And make sure you can read the whole word, I guess. It's almost like a weird paint by number thing. <laughs> hair, hair, hair. Fill in some of these smaller spaces that I can't fit the word because the, the nib's a little too big for that. Should I outline it in some way? This feels like a graphic design homework assignment. Let's give her a t-shirt. I do like oversized so it gives more surface area. I'll tie it. I don't know if I'll be able to fit words in here, but we can try. And we'll do long sleeve under that. Oh shoot, but I colored in this. <gasps> oh shoot. Well, it's yellow. Maybe we can we can find a way. Let's do t-shirt and then maybe just shirt for these in a different color. What color do we want? We want to go rainbow all the way down. <laughs> Is that a John Green book? All right, t-shirt. I want to put one big one right here. So it's like written there. I'm really not taking advantage of the brush nature. <laughs> we could try writing them in different ways. I don't know. I want to vary the size if possible. Ah, I'm getting them too close together and you can't read it. I like this one. Oh, that one might be my favorite. I like the shape. I forgot the R in that one. Mm. <laughs> no, we could try to fill this whole section in. Ooh, that's kind of cool. That might be cool to kind of do that in sections instead of the little pieces, but we'll see. I do want to go over some of these important lines with the fine liner. Is that what I dropped on the ground? Oh no, it's right here. This kind of wrinkle. Although I guess that kind of means you have to go over all the lines, doesn't it? Feels weird to not. Eh? Is that an improvement? All right, next we need red, yellow, orange, Red. It's hard to judge how long or big you need to make the letters to make it last the whole thing. But I do like that idea of fitting the word to the shape. I feel like that looks kind of cool. Wow, it looks so much better once you erase the pencil. It's like so clean. For the next part of the shirt, we can go with red. And I'll just write, well, the shirt's too close to t-shirt. Maybe sleeve? <laughs> can we write sleeve? Oh, I didn't leave enough room. <laughs> It's a longer word. Ah! It's not working. Here it should work. That one was a little bit of a fail. And that looks like an A for some reason. Even though it's e. So the idea isn't foolproof, but I mean, I think it still comes across. Now for the pants. Also, we can like use the fine liner to add a little depth to some of these places. 
Make it look a little less flat because like the letters obviously are gonna be very flat. So if we can help that out in any way, that seems smart. This kind of looks cool. I just can't decide if it's like cool enough. I don't know, <laughs> does that make sense? All right, we need the magenta. We'll do pants, I guess. I wanna follow this whole thigh. Think I can fit it? Should I plan it out? <laughs> does that work? I just fill it in. Pants. What I don't like about the big letters is it does leave, I feel like, a lot of gap of white space. Whereas when you do it smaller, it doesn't do that. So I'm gonna go over it again, just try to fill in some of the unnecessary parts. Widen up areas, make sure it follows the leg a bit more. Like here, I kind of went outside. Oopsie. <laughs> that doesn't look like a word. Pants? Am I spelling that wrong? How else would you spell it? Pants. <laughs> I didn't leave room for this hand, so I guess it's just gonna go behind the hip. But this hand fits. Could throw that in there. Got a little depth where we can, especially back here, since that leg's in the background. I feel like we need some purple up at the top. We didn't really have room for green. We could put green in the background. <laughs> Just right background. Let's add in the line art for the face. Oh, I could have wrote eyebrow. Missed opportunity. Although I have not been able to write them that small, so it's probably for the best. I think we could probably take some of the colors and just fill in some of the empty spaces, even if it's not technically a word. Just so it doesn't look so empty. The yellow was a bit of a bust because I definitely can't read that. Okay. Oh, dude, that was a bad idea. Ooh. She looks like she's from the Goofy movie. <laughs> Where's my white gel pad? Save me! <laughs> I did what I could do. So there, there was my idea. I think it definitely fits the theme and everything. I feel like I need to do something different. While I'm thinking, I'm gonna just sketch, because it's... I can't tell if it actually speeds up my brain or not. I know in like school, I used to always doodle on the side of my page while they were talking. And then if there was a note that needed made, you went psh, 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 note, and then you're back like this. And I, I don't know, I mean, I did pretty well. <laughs> so maybe it helps me. But if I'm talking at the same time, it's not gonna help. I gotta think here. What can I do? It includes letters, but it's in like completely out of the comfort zone. Not any closer to an idea. <laughs> Maybe the drawing thing is too distracting. Kind of want to try and replicate something like this. I really, really like this. Wonder if I created like a gradient with these. If we just try to like recreate this. We don't have like the exact colors, I don't think. But if I like, if we draw like a square, right, and we fill it all in with yellow. Then we add in a little bit of orange, like here. I'm trying to blend that out with the yellow upwards. Like they're not alcohol based, so they're not gonna be the best blendy. <laughs> Actually, what if I just use my alcohol markers for the background? Oh, I'm destroying the chisel. Okay, so that's not working. <laughs> but we could probably still go over it with like some of these more neutral colors. Kind of try to create some of these fun shapes. So there's like swirly ones like this with squares every once in a while. And it looks like sometimes they're in pairs and um, it kind of switches between colors. Add in some interesting different shapes. Kind of looks like eyes. Maybe back to the orange. Do the same thing. Now you don't really see that, but you could probably do this over the yellow. Yeah, I don't think this is the same art supplies that were used for this. But there's my little uh, replication. <laughs> do something with the greens. I haven't used these. What do these even look like? Seems important to know. Bluey one and then the blue. Those are pretty. Woo! 
The problem is they're all very similar in tone, so they kind of compete with each other. Or value, I mean, so, except for yellow. Yellow just tends to be that way. So, I mean, I could try doing another yellow square. Maybe a little smaller this time. And then use the greens and the blues on top of that. And just kind of create some fun shapes. Think about like letters. Yeah, not as pretty. <laughs> I think the varying the line widths is something that looks cool too. And I like the little dots. Yes. Ooh, musical notes would have been cool. It's just occurring to me now. Let's switch to the last one maybe. It's kind of look the same over the yellow. Probably take the green and overlap some. Interesting. It's a kind of a cool pattern. I think this just looks too much like the letter R though. Is there a way to fix that? Maybe add a new squiggle. All right, I like that better. That's kind of a cool geometric, kind of looks very like a 70s t-shirt. Well, not a 70s blouse or something. I'm gonna try, the problem is yellow and maybe this green are the only ones that this works with because they're the lightest. Okay, green and magenta weren't the best options. Polka dots. How about some pokies? Ooh, that kind of brings it together in a way. I like the layering. Some polka dots. Polka dots, polka dots. Ooh, I like that. Okay, these patterns are really fun. Mm -hmm. Which one do I like the best? Ooh, that's really dark. We'll see what layers that well. Try red and blue, maybe. Yeah, just drawing random shapes. Ooh, a mix of squares and circles. I like that one. So does this blue? Not really. I think a blue would look good on this. I'm gonna do the same basic patterns, but it not overlapping perfectly. Make sure of circles and squares. Try to vary the widths of them. And some are hollow and some are not. Ooh. I like that one. That one looks like one of those things you're supposed to like squint at until a shape pops out. <laughs> now what I kind of want to do is draw another person, but then add one of these patterns on it. Instead of doing the like cliff Why can I not speak calligraphy? I can see this working really well with Copic markers too. But I'm gonna stick with these. Let's draw a little bigger. Maybe we'll just focus on like one pattern on the shirt or a dress or something. Ooh, we could put a scarf in the hair or something. Okay, that looks like a pirate. I don't like that. <laughs> Too much. What about a side profile? And can I fit like a scarf in here? Head, head scarf. What if it's like huge, so it like has all these like wrinkles? Maybe it comes overlapping here, and then we can add that fun pattern. I might keep them bald. Still thinking it over. But I like the idea of the huge knot. And then the pieces back here. Something like this. And then we learned we don't want to put the liner down first. Which which color scheme? I kind of like kind of like in this one, except I want it more condensed. So let's color it in yellow. See what happens before I add in the pattern. Okay, so I want it was the two greens. I think it was these two. So let's layer this one first. But I kind of want to follow that design or this one. I don't really care for that one. And I gotta keep in mind which parts are overlapping. I like the mixture of squares and circles a little too. Fill up the space. I gotta remember this is just the first layer. There's gonna be more on top of this. Does this make sense? I feel like the knot's a little low, so it's kind of throwing off the shape a little, but we're gonna go with it. Okay, now we try not to overlap these exactly. We were having a little problem with the page ripping up underneath. I think it's because there was a pencil and then I erased and then I layered colors. Because like here it was ripping up, but like because the pencil didn't go down first, it gave me a little more leeway. Now we're having some issues. Trying to do like perpendicular to like whatever's there already. 
That look cool, does it? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, any kind of element of design always kind of looks cool with illustration. Very cool, very 70s. I feel like she needs like circle lenses, colored circle lenses, maybe yellow or green or something. Kind of like that. Does that work? Did it work? The fine pen, I don't recognize it because it's white. It looks like a white gel pen to me. Add in some liner, kind of give it a more finished, polished look. Add a little depth if I can. I guess the skin's just gonna be paper. Interesting. Interesting. We could add like a blue background. We could use this color. I should probably erase and see what's underneath here. It's a cool concept. I like the idea of using patterns. Uh, the scarf looks a little bit more like Laffy Taffy than I intended, <laughs> but it still looks cool. Actually, it looks like those tattoo fruit roll-ups. Do you remember those where it would tattoo your tongue? That's what it reminds me of. <laughs> where to go from here? Am I done? <laughs> I would like to add, maybe use that black calligraphy I cannot talk! The black calligraphy pen and kind of outline our little squares. Kind of cool. I could also use this to add a boulder line around some of this to make this pop a little bit more. Make it or break it. <laughs> I mean, it's such a weird graphic kind of illustration that I think it helped, but I won't bet money on it. <laughs> I wonder if I could use like a gray design on this. I feel like I don't want it to be like unappealing in the shapes. Kind of have to keep in mind the structure of the body. Kind of looks like a space outfit. <laughs> Maybe add a color. What happens if I layer a color on top of the gray? Does it disappear? Ooh. Ooh. Still there. I still see it. Just give her blue hair then. While wow, we're here. What about that other this one, that dual wielding Kuratake? Is this gray any lighter? I mean I could do finer lines. But I can't really do lighter lines. I was thinking if I could layer that, that would be cool. I wanna layer this in black. I love drawing in solid black. The coverage you get. And then I feel like it's only natural to take the fine liner and do the face. Just to make it pop a little bit more. It's kind of cute. It's coming together. Ooh, and then we'll be able to erase the pencil that's underneath it and it's gonna look even cleaner. <laughs> There's my hand. Beautiful. Maybe I just have for a little, uh, little barrette up here holding this piece of hair back because it just looks a little unnatural as it is. Oh, I forgot this hand. Why do I keep doing that? Let's see if I can <laughs> throw it in there last minute. There you go. <laughs> There's a hand. This is cool. Look at all the patterns we made. I really like when I try something new. Like it's the feeling. I hate trying something new, but I like having tried something new. You understand? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. Like my favorite face of the day too. Nice. Squares make this look kind of cool. Make it look intentional. Nice. Nice. I like it. <laughs> I forget how squishy it is. Cause I'm like, oh, it's just a chisel. So my brain thinks chisel and then I push hard and it gets huge. Stick that in there. Proud of myself for sticking with it. I feel like around here I was like, I have no idea what to do next. But then I found something cool! <laughs> I gotta thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed coming along with me as I tried a new art supply and uh, tried to find a way to use it. That was still like true to myself, you know? Found something. It's, it's actually, I don't know, I find it very hard to describe what I mean. Cause like, I'm trying to take something completely different than I normally do, which is like what, calligraphy? And bring it in to something that I'm interested in, I guess? That's probably the best way to put it, maybe? Let me know what's the most recent new thing you've tried that really intimidated you, 
at the beginning, but you stuck through it. Thank you guys for watching and a big thank you to Scrollerbox for sending this box my way to try out and share with you guys. I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in more information. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of waffles. Bye!